two exciting products for sport aviation. And I'm actually going to grab the highlighter here so you can follow along with me. Um, uh, maintain the core in industry leading values of affordability, simplicity, versatility, performance, quality, engineering, and ease of maintenance. Um, these are all of the founding these are all the founding tenants of Sonics Aircraft. It's what all of our design team and all of our working team uh, uh, use as, as our guide as we move to new projects. And of course we do not want to compete with our current products or confuse the market with similar products. Um, I think a lot of times you see companies that kind of eat themselves uh, with, with aircraft that have overlapping uh, functions. And obviously we don't want to do that. We have a lot of bases covered with our current product line. Um, I think uh, the niches that we've really carved out at Sonics Aircraft, the first one obviously being uh, performance. Uh, the second one obviously being um, a quality of engineering and safety uh, that is unparalleled in the industry. And uh, we follow that up with also uh, uh, affordable. Uh, and you see, you see, if we see affordable thrown around the industry way too often, and this is actually what affordable means to us. When we talk about a two-place aircraft like the Sonics uh, with the Aero V engine, that number, that 25,946, actually includes the engine. Um, also, you can go with a 120 horsepower version of the Sonics 3300 for uh, about $37,000. Yes, that includes upholstery, reasonable instrumentation, propellers, everything you need from spinner to tailwheel to build the airplane. So these are things that really drive us, and I think they're, they're reasons for our great success here at Sonics. Um, you can even build a motor glider, for example, the Xenos uh, airplane for 32.5. Um, that same cockpit as the Sonics and YX, and uh, I would argue, and, and in fact I've done some, some research, you really don't have anything in its class for less than $100,000, even as a home-built kit. Um, and then another reason for our great success is that we're not just an airframe company. We actually do control the engine and, and own an engine company as well, uh, and our product line is called the AeroV. I'll be talking a little bit about that when we get to the 1X. But I wanted to show you that, yes, these are products we're selling today. If you want a two-place, simple, lightweight, LSA-compliant aircraft, uh, we have your product today. And let's uh, lead to some of the other current products. These are just some fun pictures that I pulled off of our website. That's me right there, uh, flying during one of our workshop seminars. Um, they've been very successful. If you want to learn more about any of, our, any of our products, come to our workshop and see these things fly. Uh, we've also been featured in things like Pop Pop Popular Mechanics magazine with the YX. Uh, that was when the LSA movement was just getting its start. And then you see the Xenos aircraft down here at the bottom, a really nice looking uh, motor glider that's very functional. To, uh, turn the engine on, uh, take it up to altitude, turn it off, do some soaring, and come on home. So a very diverse product line. This is what we currently sell. And when we get into the 1X stuff, you can kind of visualize this is what your 1X tail is going to look like. This is what your 1X wing is going to look like when you lay it out on the, on the hangar floor. Uh, you're going to see some very similar fuselage parts, a very similar fuel tank, and, uh, and also with the, with the gear and, and, uh, and fiberglass parts and canopy. So this is what we currently sell as, as the Sonics kit for $14,000. Um, again, I already mentioned this, but this is another great strength of our products and our product line. We actually own this engine here called the Aero V. It's a converted Volkswagen engine. And again, I'll cover a little bit as we get into the, the 1X power plant options. Uh, but this is really the power plant, this Aero V engine, that the 1X has been designed around. And uh, you can buy the complete uh, kit for the Aero V for $6,500. Everything you see in this picture. Uh, including all these core parts, and then of course all of our red parts here that you see that are, are uh, engineered and built by us. And a couple other other products to point out. This has been a very popular um, fuel injection device. This is called the Aero Injector. Uh, we now have a 32 millimeter, a 35 millimeter. They've been very popular on a wide range of uh, aircraft, not just the Sonics pro uh, product line. And then we do things like customized exhaust. This would be for the Sonics YX and Xeno Skies. You can expect something similar for the 1X. So what's next? We, we just went over this established product line. We've got uh, pretty much the two-place side-by-side market covered with the Sonics, YX, and Xenos, kind of something for everybody. So we thought we'd turn our attention to uh, a single-place uh, sport aircraft, 
And of course, the logical way to name that single place sport aircraft is to just drop the S off the Sonics and call it the 1X. Um, this is the profile view, which again, those of you familiar with the Sonics product line will recognize it's a very um, uh, recognizable shape. Uh, you can see the tail very similar to the Sonics. Um, and you can see the uh, Aero V engine with the, uh, sticking out the front end here. And a little different gear config, and I'll explain that when we get to the gear section of the presentation. Um, so why are we looking at single place sport aircraft? Um, the main reason, uh, almost all of the sport flying that we like to do is done solo. So why even have that second seat? If you're interested in a two place sport aircraft, come on over to the Sonics YX or Xenos. Um, fewer parts. Uh, obviously, with a smaller airplane, you have fewer wing ribs, you have shorter wing spars, you have fewer fuselage formers, you have uh, smaller skins. Uh, plain old, uh, fewer parts, which also means lower kit cost. Um, lower construction time. Uh, clearly, because you have fewer parts, we can cut into the construction time. And, by the way, with fewer tools. We're using technology more and more, and as our business has grown with the Sonics, YX, and Xenos, we're using the same vendors that we've uh, been using on those parts uh, to build the 1X parts. Uh, better performance. Uh, why else would you build a single place airplane? Well, you got it smaller. Um, and uh, because you have a smaller airplane, it's lower weight. And uh, it has a little lower frontal profile. Not a little lower, quite significantly lower frontal profile. So you go faster. Um, and also, of course, the other big advantage is smaller means it's easier to store. Uh, if it's easier to store, that means you're paying less on hangar rent, and uh, you're obviously saving more money for for uh, for gas for other fun. Jer uh, Jeremy, yeah, yes. Uh, now might be a good time to find a bit about a, a, a about a little bit more about our audience. Um, so let's go ahead and launch one of the polls, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. What is your aircraft building status? So if you we could just take a moment, everybody can vote on screen. Um, we're getting some of the results going, coming in right now. Uh, we'll give a few more seconds to get everybody uh, a chance to figure out uh, what their aircraft building status is. Is it just interested, considering building in the future? You know, do you want to start in the next six months, or uh, you already have something in process, or you've already built a pro uh, an aircraft before and maybe considering a second project? So, uh, with that, let's go ahead and shut the polls down since we got about 92% of them. Uh, uh, already, oh, there's still a few more coming in. Uh, let's go ahead and close it down here in the next couple of seconds. One, two, three. We're going to go ahead and close the poll. And let's go ahead and share those results so that everybody can see where we're at. So it looks like most of the people denied are considering building in the future uh, with a close second to projects in process. All right, great. Well, that's good information to know. Uh, hold on one second. Let me go ahead and hide this poll. And there we go. Okay, it's back to you, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Um, <clears throat> so I'll roll right in, to, right back into some of the features of the One X. And the reason uh, that I consider this our most important project at this point uh, at Sonics Aircraft, it's something that I'm spending most of my time on, and uh, it's I just can't wait to fly this airplane. Is the bottom line. It's going to be awesome. Uh, why, why a folding wing? Um, the main reason you have a folding wing is so you can uh, you can store it easily, you can transport easily. Uh, so here we have easy to transport and trailer. It actually has a, a fairly simple mechanism in it. There'll be a little handle sticking down right here and a little handle sticking down here, so that you pull the handle forward. Obviously, it won't quite be that wide, but just a little stick that you'll see hanging down there. Pull it forward, which releases a main spar pin and a rear spar pin, and you fold the wing uh, up into position. This actually says seven foot tall, so that will fit inside a seven foot door. Um, so obvious uh, advantages to storing at home or sharing a hangar with two or more. Um, you can cut a lot of the expenses that we've seen uh, kind of escalate in recent years for aviation. Uh, and that's a very important thing. If we're going to do this, you want to be able to do it by yourself uh, without tools. And so that is a, a very major design feature of the One X. And I'd say it's the key design feature of the One X. Um, 1X single place folding wing sport aircraft. There it is. Uh, you can kind of see the three different views. Uh, yes, we've got a tri-gear option. Uh, there's a standard gear. We're actually building one of each of these in the shop. Um, this is a nice top view. You can see where that's where the wing fold line is on each side. 
Um, and the tail is just a scaled down Sonics tail and it's a little shorter airplane overall. Um, and there it is in the, in the folded down position, folded up position. On the next slide I have some, some of the specifications. I'm going to spend a little time here so that everybody can kind of absorb them. We do even have these listed in our Hornet's Nest uh, website so you can go back if you don't catch all these. But uh, very simply, the wingspan about 18, uh, just shy of 18 and a half uh, feet. Um, length of 16, just shy of 16 and a half feet. The wing area is 78 square feet, so if you compare that to our Sonics, Wax, or Xenos, they're actually at 98, so it's 20 less square feet of wing. Uh, the empty weight we're projecting at 540 pounds, and why do we say this is a projection? Because uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's an estimated guess. We're not going to know until we actually have the airplane complete uh, and fully weighed. Um, the maximum gross weight of 850 pounds, so for those of you gifted at math, you can do the quick calculation figure. It's about 310 pounds of useful load uh, between fuel and uh, pilot. So uh, you figure 14 U.S. gallons. I think that's a very good sized tank for an airplane in this class. Should get you about two and a half to three hours of flight time. You'll really be able to cover some territory. And maybe a cruise speed of the Sonics is 130. So I'd expect the 1X cruise speed to be a modest 140, 145 miles per hour. Um, maybe faster. We'll see when we do the, the flight testing. Uh, stall speed of 45. That's important about sport pilot when we get to that. And the VNE of 216. You're going to be able to have a heck of a lot of fun with this airplane uh, with a VNE of 216. The design limits we used with our team of engineers, uh, plus 6Gs, minus 3Gs. And I'm obviously a mechanical engineer and doing most of the main engineering on this aircraft. Uh, the construction, just like the Sonics, Wags, and Xenos, all aluminum riveted. It's what we know. Uh, it's what we like. It's very clean and uh, a very simple construction method, not, not a high skill level required to build this airplane. You can see here the engine I listed as the Aerofi 80 horsepower. That's what we're going to focus for now because of the affordability aspect and because basically this airplane was designed around that very engine. Uh, get a couple of questions in real quick. Sure, go ahead. Um, are you ever going to offer a ballistic shoot on the Sonics or the 1X in this case? I'll answer that question exactly the way I do with our Sonics, Wags, and Xenos aircraft. Uh, no, uh, we do not believe in ballistic parachutes for our line of aircraft, and the simple reason is we do this in the first place. We design for plus six, minus three Gs. So uh, the bottom line is we do not believe you will need a ballistic chute. If you do want to shoot, go the simple route and strap it on your back especially if you're going to be doing uh, aerobatic flight in a single place airplane, save yourself a couple thousand dollars and, and go with that chute. The other reason people deploy uh, BR, uh, BRS type chutes is if you get into weather or get into bad conditions, well don't fly. If it's really bad out and you get the right uh land the airplane uh, whenever you feel you're in an unsafe condition. So that's how we feel about that. And uh, Brian would like to know, are we going to see a, a, a Sonics two place with a folding wing? <laughs> That's a good question, Brian. I'd say stay tuned. At this point, uh, we have our plate full if you've been following any of the Hornet's Nest uh, design activities. But uh, we clearly listen to our customers when they ask for things, and, and it might be something you see in the future. Before we move on, uh, how much commonality is there with the Sonics? Is, you know, is the wing cord the same? That's what Ryan wants no. to know. Yeah, very little. There, there's almost no shared uh, component parts because basically everything in the 1X is scaled down from the Sonics. There is some, but very little to none. Okay, so I'll uh, keep moving here on the rest of the presentation. Um, these are some fun models we did. Uh, actually, our good friend Tony Spicer built this model, and this was on display in our booth uh, at AirVenture this past year. This is actually a 20-foot wide by 20-foot deep uh, garage, and you can see here this is a, obviously a very recognizable Volkswagen bus. Uh, it happens to be a 1 8 scale, and guess what this is? A 1 8 scale 1X. Uh, you can see the wings fold. It quite easily fits, quite comfortably fits alongside that Volkswagen bus. You can see there's plenty of room for passengers to move on either side, plenty of room for storage in your 20 by 20 garage. And that was obviously a, a major design goal with the 1X. Also note the height. If you go measure your garage door right now, I'd almost uh, guarantee that you have seven feet of clearance uh, in your garage, no matter what uh, size your house is. And then this is also the same view. This is the seven foot line, if you will, across. Um, and we've got that 20 by 20 footprint. You can see there's plenty of room for storage back here uh, for all the, all the stuff that you've accumulated over the years. 
uh, under 17 foot long. These are also some fun slides I did just so you could kind of get a perspective for how big the 1X is compared to a, a standard, very recognizable Cessna 172 parked in the T-hanger. Uh, you can see you have a couple options. You can park it kind of on, on a side, uh, a, 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 a kind of a side to side 45 degree under the wing, and you could obviously do one on this side, or you could actually take the time to park them uh, parallel give you a little more wing clearance around the Cessna, but that's a fun thing you can do if you have a buddy that has a hangar uh, and doesn't mind moving an airplane once in a while. Or I think even cooler, you can have let's see one, two, three, four, five one X's in a standard small T hanger. Uh, you even have room for all of your tool benches. You have room for some storage shelves, a couch, a fridge and uh, a fairly large workbench. I'm very excited about this, and I think it has the possibility to really cut hangar rents around the country for uh, the recreational flyers out there. A very common question we get, and this is something I posted on the website uh, last month, uh, was will I fit? And of course, we want you to answer that question definitively before you'd ever go down the path of construction. Uh, I scaled here. This is uh, one of the Pasmini guys. He's uh, 72 and 5 eighths inches uh, tall, so just over 6 feet tall. And uh, the best way for you really to find out if you're ultimately going to fit is to come on down to AirVenture. Come on out and try it on. At the very least, we'll have a cockpit mock-up, but obviously if I do my job and uh, keep on the pace that we've kept, we'll have an airplane or two there that you'll be able to try on. Note there's clearance here in front of the guy's foot. There's clearance here on the top of his head. We don't really have them positioned like you would with full bent knees, so I don't want you to just say, oh, six foot is the limit. Uh, I fully expect, like we see in our Sonics, YX, and Xenos uh, fleet, guys up to six foot six will be able to fit. Uh, obviously, that's not a guarantee because every body shape and everybody is different, but uh, that's our hope that uh, we try to maximize this uh, shape as much as we could. Uh, as was pointed out on our email list by Tony recently, Tony Spicer, you can actually go ahead and build a cockpit mock-up if you want. I have all the dimensions listed on the website that you'd be able to go to Lowe's and, and uh, Fleet Farm or wherever and grab some wood and build one. Now I want to cover a very important topic. Uh, this is a, another major source of confusion that we constantly deal with, and that is whether the 1X is sport pilot eligible. Um, very important to note this word eligibility, sport pilot eligibility. To be sport pilot eligible, there are really six major criteria. And the 1X will clearly be, uh, unquestionably be, uh, eligible to be flown by a sport pilot with the AeroV engine. Uh, how can I say that so definitively? The first criteria would be gross weight of 13, 20 pounds or less. Obviously, the 1X uh, is less than that. Uh, the stall speed will be 45 knots or less. Uh, that's a clean stall speed, or 51 miles per hour. Uh, the maximum speed and level flight, uh, and this, is, this is definitely the most confused uh, part uh, we deal with when we answer sport pilot questions, but this is the speed limit. Maximum speed and level flight with a maximum continuous power of not more than 138 miles per hour, calibrated airspeed under standard atmospheric conditions and at sea level. So when you fly a 1X with an AeroV engine uh, limited to maximum continuous power, you will go less than that 138 miles per hour, just like you do in a Sonix uh, or YX with a 3300 Jabiru. Uh, that is why we're so uh, adamant about, um, about its compliance. There's really no question about it. Uh, unpowered or single engine powered? Yep, we're single engine. Um, unpressurized? Yep two occupants or less. So that's why a single place makes a lot of sense for sport pilot eligibility. So that's very important for you to really understand everything on this slide and be able to con continue to educate everybody out there about what it means to be sport pilot uh, compliant. It's important to us because there's a lot of people aging out there. There's a lot of young people just getting into aviation that are sport pilots only. We want to have a product line that's available to them. Now I'll move to the meat of the presentation. This is why you all tuned in today. You want to know exactly where we are with the 1X. And uh, I'm actually going to show you some very exciting slides. Uh, this is what I've been doing on those long winter nights uh, at my house and at Sonics. Um, we'll start with the vertical tail. 
Um, you can see those of you familiar with the Sonics construction will see a lot of parts that look almost identical to Sonics parts, uh, especially the forward vertical tail spar. Uh, it uses the same channels, uh, including the two main spar channels and the cross channels, and also a rather innovative solution where it shares uh, a tail tip between the vertical and horizontal components. Um, the rudder is a very simple rudder with a straight horn out the back. Make it even simpler than the Sonics wherever we can, and let me tell you, it's really hard to get an airplane simpler than the Sonics, and the only reason we were able to do it here is that obviously it's a single place, so it's a little smaller, able to cut some part counts. That's what the vertical tail looked like a couple weeks ago when we first started construction. Um, this is actually the rear spar, a uh, couple of them. We're building, uh, while we're doing this, we're doing two full prototypes along with uh, test units of the tail and the wings. You can see the substructure was then put together. Point out some of the people here. You can see my father, John uh, Monette. Uh, there's Tony Spicer, who came for a week to help us, and a good friend of ours, Rob Maddox, who's been uh, around our family for a long time, good family friend. So we're having a big work party here on the 1X. The vertical tail, and there, as we continue with the vertical tail, you can see we uh, had it all up-drilled to 1 8 inch Clecos, the copper Clecos, and this is about to be riveted together. And we've actually completed uh, three of those units. Jeremy, this might be a good time for a question from one of the, okay. the, the uh, attendees, which is why not a Y tail on the 1X? Sure, a why not? Um, I think that the, the main reason is we, we always like to uh, walk before we run. Uh, in the case of, uh, of, of the 1X, we, and let's talk about Sonics versus YX numbers, um, the Sonics is still a little more popular than, than the YX. So it's always my philosophy that if you're going to build a product for the public, you should first cover the one that you think is going to be a little more popular. And it's my opinion, and in my experience, the conventional tail is more popular. What's next? Well, might be a Y tail. Stay tuned. <laughs> and let us know if that's what you're looking for and that may drive uh, us in that direction for future projects. Again, we have a hugely full schedule, so we're just trying to bite off as much as we can chew for now. Uh, back to the progress here on the, on the horizontal stabilizer. This is uh, just a CAD shot right off of uh, my CAD package on my computer. Uh, those of you that have built a uh, Sonics uh, horizontal tail will see a lot of similarities. Same thing, you see a, a straight uh, forward strap, a straight aft strap uh, with the tie-down bolts. We've actually made it a little simpler by going with uh, angles that are then bolted to the straps that are laser cut. Uh, we also have the same uh, uh, um, ribs that we saw, the vertical ribs and the, and the main spars. And this is common between both the horizontal and the vertical, so you only have uh, three of the same part and three of the same root rib, and that's that, or tip rib. So pretty exciting stuff. Uh, it does have a common uh, elevator horn, similar setup to the, to the Sonics. And these are the horizontals in, in process. This is the rear spar of the horizontal stabilizer. There's a Tony uh, dr up drilling the laser cut strap uh, to the channels. And you can see that there's the, only, the only part missing in this picture is actually the skin uh, with, the, with the holes in it. So you can see how simple the construction is here of the 1X. Uh, and there it is. There's the skin uh, pre-bent. See, actually, uh, the way you assemble it, you drill and rivet one side, uh, flip it over. And we actually used a little weight here, uh, a little anvil blank to lay it on and drill the rear spar. And everything kind of self-aligns with the way we use laser cut parts. Works really, really slick uh, with a little C-clamp at the back. Jeremy, yes. uh, John would like to know, will, uh, will ribs and skins be pe pre-drilled and all forming be done for them? And also, what type? Of, another uh, question was, what type of rivets are you going to use? Sure, yeah, the, the construction will be identical to the Sonics, uh, Wax or Xenos. So we'll, we will continue to use the blind type rivets, the stainless steel rivets we've had such tremendous success with, twice as strong in shear than a, than a driven rivet, and you keep a simpler structure by not having to have a bucking bar back there. So that's, uh, that's answer to that. Uh, and yes, the, as far as the laser cut parts go, yeah, you'll have a pre-bent and pre-drilled uh, skin. We actually used our pre-drilled skins uh, from our same suppliers as we use on the Sonics, YX, and Xenos. And uh, we'll also have the, those uh, channels will be uh, um, 
uh, pre-bent for you, so you just have to cut them down to size. This is a, about as straightforward a construction method as you can find on an airplane. Um, so here is the tail complete. You can see here's the vertical tail, and here's the horizontal tail across the bottom. You can see they tie together in the middle. And those are complete for uh, both of our prototype aircraft as well as our test aircraft. Uh, here's some other cool progress pictures. Uh, this is the rudder uh, in con uh, during construction. You can see the rudder. There's not much to that either, just like the, the Sonics family. Um, you'd see the rudder is just a formed uh, triangle section that we supply just like you see it in this picture. Uh, this is the uh, bottom rib, the top rib. You have some piano hinge that you're going to drill and rivet to it and then your laser cut uh, rudder horn here on the on the right hand side. And then you can see here, here's my father John uh, riveting the uh, skin together at this end and he'll be doing this end and uh, putting just one row of rivets along the piano hinge line and at the bottom and you have yourself a rudder. Here's a progress shot on the elevators. Uh, one note about the skins. These skins you see here with the elevators are actually common to the Xenos. So Xenos builders use the same section. So to answer a question about part commonality, there is some shared stuff here uh, with the elevator skin and the rudder skin as well as the uh, ailerons. Um, and then you can see these are going to be Xenos uh, ribs that are laid out and ready to attach. And there's the very, those of you that have built the Sonics are very familiar with the elevator horn assembly uh, that goes in the middle. And this is uh, your only tooling right here, folks, is just this big flat table. Uh, we just have one of those, basically an old door type table that's nice and flat. And uh, moving on to Jeremy, ahead, one, Charlie. one question if I could. Uh, Mark would like to know about, he does, he's noticing there's not a lot of corrosion protection, it looks like, on the skins. Correct. That's an astute observation, and we don't waste our time. Uh, 6061 T6 aluminum is about as corrosion resistant a material as you can find. And that's what the entire primary structure of your 1X will be. Uh, so same as with the Sonic YX and Xeno. So if you, especially if you're going to paint the airplane after you're done, don't waste your time. Uh, if you live in a saltwater coast environment, it might be worth doing some kind of interior corrosion protection, and I never fault a guy for doing that. But if you're in a U.S. environment, I think you're just uh, wasting weight. Um, so moving right along on the progress, the ailerons here. You can see this is the same aileron section as the uh, Xenos. So it's a little skinny aileron section with just a couple of ribs at the, at the tip and a rib at the root. And then again, we have that piano hinge uh, uh, drilled and riveted along the uh, hinge line. These are the counterweight assemblies. Again, those of you familiar with the Sonics, it's just kind of a mini version of your Sonics counterweight assembly. Um, moving to the uh, flaps, uh, they, there are little flaps on the 1X. Um, they're, they're, you know, you have to build a trailing edge anyway, so my philosophy is let's throw some flaps on, make them a 45, and uh, slow the airplane down. So uh, these, this is the flap. You can see another very simple section, just two ribs, uh, tip and root, with a little hinge line. And since we have a unibody construction with the wing root attached to the fuselage, it'll be a very simple uh, uh, swing assembly for the flaps. Uh, this is a, a slide I'll just stop on for a little bit so you can kind of absorb. I, I know you're not going to get a lot of useful information here, but those of you with a, with a keen eye and those of you familiar with uh, CAD drafting can pick up just about every detail of the wing for the 1X on this picture. Um, just going very quickly over it, uh, you can see here these are the details for all the rib sections. Um, you can see here's, here's the guy sitting there with his uh, control stick assembly, make sure it clears everything through the wing. Uh, this is a top view of the wing assembly with the fold mechanism. Uh, then these are all the spar plates and spar caps for the inner section. These are all the spar webs and spar caps for the outer section. And these are all the part details. You'll recognize those are the wing skins. Those of you, again, that have built Sonics, Wags, and Xenos, those will look very familiar. And those will be folded down, down the middle to do an airfoil section. Um, here are the wing rib uh, tools and wing, uh, wing ribs. You'll actually see the profile sections for each of the three as we move uh, inboard to outboard, as well as a section for the aft rib. Those are built and in process. You can also see the wing pivot mechanism. Uh, this is perhaps the only uh, uh, assembly that requires multiple parts in the 1X. Um, and there's some paddles with some, uh, with some uh, little adjustable feet that you're going to adjust when you, when you first uh, fold your wings down. 
it's a pretty ingenious, simple little system uh, for, for mixing the ailerons. Then uh, the wing spar is also in progress. We've been just drilling machines the last uh, week or two here in, in R&D with the little spar plates. These are the main spar web plates, and the upper and lower caps are just the one-by-one one inch uh, angles. You also see these are the wing root sections uh, for the spar, and they go all the way through the airplane. So the actual fuselage would go from there to there, the fuselage box, and extend in this direction and this direction. And you can see um, this would be the uh, outboard section of the wing, and this is the hinge mechanism would be located here and on the other side. And here is a nice progress uh, picture of the fuselage, what we've done so far in the engineering. Wow, that looks like a very simple uh, CAD drawing. And yes, the, the 1X is a very simple airplane, so it deserves to have some simple CAD drawings. Uh, just some features to point out. There's the main uh, fuselage box, just like we have in the Sonics, YX, and Xenos. There's the main box. Uh, this will also be a straight uh, section here for the aft fuselage section. And then you have your uh, turtleback skin that will be lapped over the top with just a few formers. Uh, so again, fewer parts than the Sonics and uh, a little simpler, smaller fuselage. Hey. Yes, Charlie. Uh, uh, question, does the, does the uh, spar use solid rivets? Yes, the spar will be assembled, and I'll actually go back in the presentation. The spar will be assembled with a mixture of solid uh, AD rivets, if you will. Uh, as well as bolts, uh, bolts in some critical locations where you have uh, critical load joints, but uh, otherwise it'll be just like the Sonics, Wax, and Xenos, where you'll have solid rivets all along both sides and in these sections uh, in the middle as you attach your two plates together. And then one more question: um, Will the folding wings on the One X be able to handle wind and rough road loads if it's trailered on an open trailer from airport to home? You bet. Spend a lot of time on that, and that's a feature that you'll learn more about as we get closer to Air Venture. But absolutely, it's critically important that uh, this thing be robust, not only from an aerobatic design perspective, but also to be on the on the trailer uh, transporting to and from. Uh, now I'll move quickly to the landing gear, um, and see this is a, a bent aluminum landing gear, which my father John pioneered on the Sonare series. Uh, he and his friend Mike Kaur. Uh, who worked together on it, and it's become the standard on just about every aircraft you can, or every, a lot of uh, standard home belts. Obviously with the Sonics, we love the titanium gear legs, but uh, titanium can be a little expensive, and this assembly tends to be just a little easier to install. So you know, those of you, again, that are very observant might, might notice that uh, um, there's, there's a nice little design feature that you haven't seen in aluminum gear before, so we're, we're uh, very excited to be rolling that out. So before I go through the general Q&A sections, I'm going to throw it back over to Charlie for another poll. This would be an appropriate one uh, related to the landing gear that you had uh, asked about before. So let's see what preferences people, uh, people have for the 1X as far as tricycle or tailwheel. Uh, I noticed when you set up this poll question, Jeremy, you didn't go with the mono wheel like you have on the jet. <laughs> that would be if it was a John Monette written uh, <laughs> <laughs> written poll, then definitely it would have that. Okay. Uh, I'll give everybody a, a few more seconds to get their votes in here. We have about uh, almost 90% of the people have checked in. So once we get up to a little bit more, we will go ahead and shut it down here in just a couple of seconds, and we'll share the results. So let me close that out and share it. And believe it or not, tailwheel 64%. What do you think of that, Jeremy? I think that's excellent. Um, you know, our philosophy is always to go with it. The simple aircraft, and it's hard to get any simpler again with a tailwheel than, than you can with a tailwheel aircraft. Um, and you know, as a as a pilot of both tailwheel and tri gear aircraft, uh, you know, I kind of prefer. It feels a little more sporty. Feels a little more like a fighter jock when you do a tailwheel aircraft. But uh, let me tell you, I have a heck of a lot of fun with our tri gear aircraft, though, too. So you can't go wrong. Uh, luckily, we'll have one of each, hopefully, at Air Ventures, so you can kind of see them side by side. Um, now moving to some general Q&A, and I know this is a little small, I apologize, I'll actually read through these very quickly uh, and let you absorb. These will be posted on our website tomorrow uh, once we uh, do, the, do the formal update. You all got the scoop tonight, though. Uh, question number one, will the 1X be able to have a wide tail? We talked about this earlier. At this point, no. The 1X model, just like the Sonics, is only available as a conventional tail, and I said, for now. Uh, question two, how will the tri-gear affect uh, 1X performance? We anticipate the tri-gear will result in a similar decrease in performance as the Sonics and YX, 
which uh, again, those of you out there, you can expect about four to six miles per hour. So not only do I think the tail dragger looks a little better and has better rough field capability, but also uh, it doesn't have that speed disadvantage that the Trigear does. Um, here's the question we get a million times a day. When will a kit be available? And of course our answer is as soon as possible. But this is the way we do things at Sonics. First, we build, we design and build our prototypes. Uh, then we complete our thorough flight testing. And then and only then do we offer a kit. We just feel that that is the responsible way to do things. We want to be able to um, tweak things if they need to be. I think that my father and uh, Pete Buck have been remarkably great mentors for me so that we can get as, as close as we possibly can on the first try. But obviously, if, it's, if we find something in the product that we don't like, we won't release it. Um, so there is always that possibility. But uh, the One X is going to be a winner. Question four, does it use the AeroV engine? Yes, the One X is designed around the AeroV engine. Um, we do field questions about alternative engines all the time. And my honest answer is right now, the AeroV is, per, is a perfect fit. We don't need to look elsewhere. If you have an alternative engine, sell it. Buy an AeroV, put it in the One X, and you're going to be really happy with it. Um, again, we'll, we'll watch the market very closely, and if we have a lot of people who want specific engines, maybe we'll be persuaded in the future. But for now, Jer go with an AeroV. Jeremy, uh, just a follow up on that, because several uh, of the uh, attendees have, have sent in questions about the Jabiru engines, and of course, those are used on the Sonics. And people want to know both the 2200 and the 3300. Would those ever be options for this aircraft? Of course, I'll tell you the the 2200 I'd be pretty comfortable with in an AeroV or excuse me in a One X, but uh, for now I'd recommend the AeroV from a weight perspective. That's what we're designing the airplane for. I'm designing the airplane for. Um, as far as the 3300 Jabiru, that kind of takes you up out of sport pilot. So I'd be very hesitant to recommend that. And why don't you see what kind of performance we have with the AeroV first before you commit to spending that much more money? Um, question number five: Will there be a One X specific builders workshop? Uh, no. Come on over to the regular Sonics workshop. Uh, the next one is shameless plug time. Next one is May 1st and May 2nd, and filling up quickly. It is uh, on track to be one of our most popular workshops ever, um, and our 47th, I believe. Uh, workshops will be shared with Sonics, Wax, and Xenos builders because of all the things I just talked about. The construction of the One X is so similar to the Sonics, Wax, and Xenos, it doesn't need its own workshop. Share with the others. Um, question six, will a prototype be ready for AirVenture? Uh, of course, there's no guarantees in life. Again, we have so much on our plate at Sonex. Um, we're so incredibly busy, not just with our day-to-day -day ops, but with all our other R&D programs. But clearly, we want to have it there at AirVenture. And like I already promised earlier, at the very worst, we're going to have something that you're going to be able to try on and, and, and see if it works for you. Uh, question seven, can, we, can you come uh, see the Sonex factory at AirVenture? Very common question, yes. We'll again be offering factory tours during the air show. Uh, watch the Sonics website and e-groups. You can sign up in advance, and I'll be personally giving a lot of those tours. Love to have you over at Sonics. Uh, I should note most of the cool stuff is actually over at the booth during Air Venture Week. It's either on display in the electric uh, area or at, at our large Sonics booth with all the airplanes, but there's still a lot of cool stuff to see at the factory. Uh, question eight, will I be able to put nav lighting in the folding wing? Absolutely, no problem. Uh, in my opinion, you'll be easily able to provision, uh, since the folding wing is going to be such a solid folding mechanism, you'll be able to uh, uh, put the provisions in for the nav lighting and have a nice little fold there. Uh, question nine, what size workshop and workbench do I need? Perhaps the second most popular question. And uh, that is the workshop and workbench requirements, same as the Sonic Swags and Xenos, a uh, four by eight foot work table. Uh, the kit will probably come in the same packaging, which is four foot by 10 foot. So if you want to use the crate, the One X kit comes in to build your table, you can do that too. Uh, so very exciting. I want to just briefly touch on ways you can follow progress. I know I didn't even come close to scratching the surface here and covering all the things that people wanted to see. So I welcome you to uh, follow the progress in, in these other ways. Uh, check out our Hornet's Nest R&D website often. Uh, it's the big logo. Look for this logo that's been in the corner of all the presentations and go ahead and click on that. You'll go right to the R&D area. Uh, you can join our opt-in mailing list, follow us on Twitter, or have our RSS feed services, which are awesome. Uh, and those, again, you can sign up through the links on our website. 
You can join our Sonics Talk email list. I know a lot of you are already members, uh, almost 4,000 members on our Sonics Talk group, which is awesome. And uh, that's the link there. Uh, or come to a Sonics workshop. We love the workshops. We give you huge incentives to come, kit discounts. You can definitely expect we'll continue that trend with the 1X. Uh, so there's no reason you can't come to a May, October, or February workshop here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And obviously, come to AirVenture. It is the event of the year. We love it. We have a great time. We wish we didn't have to work the whole week, but it is fun. And uh, that's going to be a great way to catch up on where the 1X is at. So I guess that, that pretty much concludes my portion of the presentation. Um, I just wanted to, uh, again, encourage everybody to visit our website. And if you have questions, feel free to email our staff. I have uh, our sales email is here, checked by Mark Shable on a normal basis. And you're welcome to send any questions to him uh, that you may have about the project. Uh, Jeremy, you don't get off that easy. Uh, we are ready for the lightning round now, where we're going to start firing through some of these questions that have stacked up during the presentation. So let's okay. go ahead with how much is the kit going to cost? Sure. Uh, let's talk about cost. And I'm actually going to speed back through my presentation to get you to the costing slide that I put up on the Sonics, YX, and Xenos. Um, just give me a second here. And while you're doing that, Jeremy, another sure. one that came up a lot was, okay, is there going to be a plans built option? Yeah, I'll answer the plans built option right now. No. Uh, our plan is not to offer a plans built option, and people are going to ask why. Uh, there's two primary reasons why we're not going to offer a plans built option. Number one, it's really hard to build a business uh, by just offering plans. Uh, we put a tremendous, I, I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say thousands of hours into the plan sets, into the infrastructure required to properly support, and I think that's one a very important point to make, properly support this kit aircraft. Uh, we will not leave customers out in the cold, and we, we really require that these be supported properly. So uh, basically, the business runs by selling parts and by selling plans. And uh, by combining the two, it, it works for a very affordable and very successful, high, high success rate uh, for, the, for those kits and plans. Um, and the other reason we offer mainly kits, and we push these so hard, not that they're extremely affordable, first off, in my opinion, uh, but also uh, by, by using the kit, we can simplify the plan set considerably. So those of you that are Sonics builders uh, that use the full kit have about 30 or 35 extra pages of plans that you just throw in the trash. So right out of the gates, we can come up with a project that's very clean and efficient and simple to build. Um, when I talk about uh, what's it going to cost, look at this. This is the only number I want you to look at for now. Uh, we've already talked about all the design features of uh, the One X and, uh, and that it's simpler and has fewer parts and has a little better performance than the Sonics. Um, you can see you can build today. You can write a check to Sonics for $25,946 and have every piece you need from spinner to tailwheel add a little bit for shipping and all the other customized features you do. But uh, you can definitely expect the 1X kit with the AeroV engine will be less than that number, uh, be less than $26,000. I would shoot for, you know, in the 20 to 22 range, but, but I don't know. Uh, we'll see where the parts come out. We'll see how well our suppliers can do. And I think most importantly, we'll see what kind of interest there is out there so we can order in larger batches. And those of you that own businesses and have run businesses uh, and have studied any kind of business model at all know that purchasing power leads to lower part prices. And uh, that's really what we're after. We want to deliver the best possible product at the lowest possible price. Be flown off grass. The answer is yes, no problem. Uh, I would just say I'd invite you to join the Sonics Talk e-group and uh, go ahead and ask the guys how they're doing with their Sonics YX and Xenoses off of grass. And uh, that's the same answer you have for the one. It's got the same wheels and tires and, and wheel pants, so no problem. Stick orientation. Is it going to be a side stick, center stick? Uh, the 1X will actually be a side stick. And I'll again, excuse me while I speed through the presentation here, um, I'll show you that side view of uh, will I fit. You can see roughly the stick configuration. I have it drawn in in blue and red in this slide, but roughly the stick looks like that. And then it is able to sneak the aileron uh, pushrod tube out through that large lightning hole. And it'll be quite comfortable. I've tried it myself. I'm not a tall man. 
those that have seen me in person, I'm, I'm five foot six, and I'd be lucky if I'm 155 pounds. But uh, I, fit com I want to try to make this cockpit to comfortably fit the little guys like me and also comfortably fit the average person, which seems to be uh, these days, as I look around at my buddies, uh, a little over six feet tall. Um, so anyway, you'll be comfortable either way, and I really like the stick positioning where we have it. Offering any sub kits for the, the One X? Um, that's a good question. We're kind of going to cross that bridge when it comes. Um, we've we've had a lot of success, early success, with the Sonic sub kits, and I'm just again pulling up the airframe kit slide, so you can get a really good feel for what we're talking about when we say sub kits. Uh, here basically is the Sonic's tail kit. Everything you see there, it's the form skins, it's the tail tips, it's the it's the elevator skins, elevator horn, and uh, some of the form channels and angles. So it's a definite possibility, but I think where, what I would push people toward is uh, this whole slide, buying the whole kit at once as I crunch the numbers and as I look at how affordable the One X is with everything. Man, it's really tough to compete with that, especially when you factor in shipping and storage expenses and individual handling fees. It just makes sense to get everything in one shot. That's what I encourage everybody to do. A gravity, will, it, will it be a gravity-feed fuel system or do you need a yes. fuel pump? Gravity feed fuel system, most definitely. Um, we've had great success with gravity feed fuel systems, and uh, that's that's just the way to do it. Why why needlessly complicate with fuel pumps and things? And that's again why we push hard for that uh, rotationally molded fuselage mounted fuel tank. It's the safest fuel tank on the market. Period. Members want to know. Okay, what do you think the build time is going to be? Great question. And there's my answer. <laughs> um, build time is all over the map. Uh, there is no proper answer to build time. I guess um, I'll answer it by giving you stats from Sonix, YX, and Xenos builders. Uh, I have had uh, firsthand reports of Sonix builders that have built in under 500 hours. Uh, these guys have built other airplanes before. They don't uh, gossip. They don't uh, drink too much coffee. They get out there and they work. And if you're the kind of person, I, and by the way, I, I obviously get this question asked a lot. Um, it has absolutely nothing to do with building experience, how quickly you can build an airplane. In my opinion, build time has everything to do with how persistent you are, uh, how organized you are, and how, uh, how you can keep yourself focused. Uh, if you get distracted easily, if you have a bunch of visitors that you kibitz about, you can lose an hour, you can lose two in no time. So stay focused and stay on this project and it's going to go very quickly. I, I would expect a 1X airframe uh, to go together in 300 to 400 hours. I think if it's any more than that, you're wasting time. I uh, wanted to know how many people are on the, the webinar tonight. We had just right at 400 people tonight, so uh, thrilling to have that many people enjoy your presentation. Uh, also, several wanted to know if you could give a little bit. I know this is on the 1X, but is there any updates on the jet and the electric project you guys are working on so hard? <laughs> I, I will invite, again, anybody looking for those updates because they're, they're just way too much information for me to try to relay uh, in this amount of time. But, yeah, please, come visit the websites. I'm going to pull up that slide, and I'm just going to leave it up. Uh, join one of those uh, e-groups. Uh, join one of the opt-in mailing lists. Uh, I feel we're doing an excellent job. This is what we're talking about, these opt-in mailing lists through this web link below. Um, we're doing an excellent job of getting regular updates on those projects, and, and if you're disciplined about visiting the website or joining those, you're going to be have the latest information. Uh, the jet's an amazing little airplane, and we've fired up the, the motor now, I believe it's uh, 10 or 12 times, and uh, it gets the adrenaline pumping every time you hear that thing fire up. It is a kick in the pants. And again, that's my father's project, so I think uh, John Monette is going to be the best one to ask about that and give the updates on that. And moving to the electric, that's a, a bigger group of people, uh, and we're spending a lot of time, a lot of money. And to me, again, it's the short-term success of the company and the short-term product that we're really going to be successful with is the 1X. The longer-term project we're going to be successful with is uh, going to be that electric airplane because uh, everybody's going to have an electric vehicle. And I'm really excited about how much we're learning, I'm learning from the team, from suppliers, and uh, from everybody that, that's, uh, that's contributed to that awesome project.
What about storing the one act in an enclosed trailer? Is that possible? Sure. Uh, again, the specifications are uh, eight, uh, just rough numbers, guys. Uh, eight feet wide, seven feet tall, and uh, about six and a half feet long. Uh, so, so remember that. Excuse me, not six and a half. Um, tw uh, whatever my spec said there. There's a lot of numbers going through this head, guys. But uh, roughly, if you can fit it in that trailer, that, that's the specification you're looking at um, right there, 16 and a half feet long. So that, that's the trailer specs to know, and, and you can do enclosed. But I'd encourage you, if you're just going to do short trips to the airport, to just uh, tow it on its own gear. It's not going to have tow in, tow out, so you can literally be able to bring it up and successfully tow it on its own gear. Don't want to do it too many miles because you'll, you'll wear out the tires, but it's something that's possible with the 1X. So you would be hauling it backwards then? Yeah, I would turn it around and haul it backwards. Again, if you're just a short trek from the airport, that's very practical, very reasonable to do. If you're a longer trek from the airport, I would recommend, highly recommend a flatbed trailer, a snowmobile trailer. And uh, if you wanted to, like a glider guy, keep your uh, airplane enclosed at the airport, you'll have to come up with something that's seven feet tall. And uh, what is the TBO on the Aero V engine, Jeremy? Yeah, the, again, let's let's do one. Let's take one more opportunity to educate. There is no such thing as a TBO with an Aero V or any experimental engine. That would be time before overhaul. That's where you're required to overhaul it. it doesn't exist. So you simply overhaul it when it needs maintenance. And I know what you mean by the question. Um, if you notice that your compression is down, that you're not uh, climbing out quite where you should. Uh, then it's time to, to, to take a look at your engine. Uh, those of you, th the, the people that I see that take good care of their Aero V engines, that change the oil regularly, that run it in the green arcs, easily get 700 hours out of their Aero Vs. Uh, some guys get 1,000 or 1,200. Um, but those of you that uh, abuse your engine, run it hot, uh, use the wrong gas, uh, you know, don't ever adjust the valves and just beat the crap out of it. You're going to get a couple hundred hours. So you have the wrench ready. Have a luggage area. Uh, yes, it will have a luggage area. This is a good slide to show you. Uh, the highlighter is the wrong tool, so I'll move over to a pen. Uh, the, the baggage area, just like for the Sonics, YX, and Xenos, will be right there. Uh, when we first introduced the Sonics, y, Sonics uh, aircraft, we just had a duffel bag slung behind the seat. But uh, most definitely, you'll have the capability of, of carrying baggage. Those guys that are like me, who are in the 160-pound range, uh, will obviously be able to carry more baggage and more gas than those of you that are uh, heavier. And that's just the way the numbers work out. What about electric start? Yes, the Aero V has standard electric start. Uh, it's something we're very proud of, and I, I, there's really no question in my mind that the Aero-V is the most advanced uh, uh, auto conversion available on the market. Uh, to directly answer your question, there's your electric starter right there. It fits through that hole in the accessory case. And again, to reiterate, everything in this picture you see here, you get in one of your, in, in your Aero-V crate. Is the, thing, is the fuel in the wings or the fuselage? The, wing, the fuel is actually in the fuselage, and I'm going to see if I can find the slide that uh, actually shows you the fuel tank. That's this one. This pink thing uh, is the fuel tank. And again, we already covered that's uh, 14 gallons, which in my opinion is more than adequate for the mission of the airplane. Let's go back to the mission of the airplane. Uh, it, it will be cross-country capable. There's no question. You can go ahead and, and take a 1X on a long cross-country. You can, you can take it to, from, uh, from New York to, to California if you want. You'll be making some fuel stops, um, uh, and you won't be able to carry that much baggage. But let's talk about the mission. The reason we designed it as a, an aerobatic airplane, as a 6G airplane, which, by the way, nothing in its class in my opinion, has been designed to those G loadings, uh, meaning there is no competitor for the 1X when you're talking about recreational aerobatics, perhaps except for a Sonic Sport Acro model. Uh, but anyway, the, 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 that's what, what we're doing with this airplane. We're, we're taking a little bit of gas, we're taking a little bit of baggage, uh, we're taking the shirt and clothes on our back, and we're going to have some fun. Let's go do some loops and rolls and spins. And let's go uh, fly airplanes uh, the way the way airplanes were intended to be flown. 
And will you have an optional trailer that you'll offer for the One X? <laughs> uh, I think our optional trailer, I, I think uh, my father will be very proud of this answer. Uh, our optional trailer is a snowmobile trailer. It's just a flatbed trailer that you can pick up as inexpensively as you can find. And uh, how difficult to build is the Aero V engine? Uh, in my opinion, um, it requires uh, very little skill. I would say it requires about the same amount of skill to to uh, assemble an Aero-V engine as it does to uh, build a simple 1X uh, airframe. So again, that's why we push so much for this kit type engine. I guess we get asked a lot, are we going to offer an assembled Aero-V? And my absolute answer is no. Why? Uh, to me, uh, there is nobody better qualified to maintain an engine than the individual that put it together. Uh, there is no machining, no welding, no uh, special skills required to put an Aero-V together. Uh, you need a, a mechanic set. And by the way, this is a great opportunity when you get your Aero-V uh, to go grab your mechanic friend or somebody in the EAA chapter uh, because every single mechanic in America has worked on, on a Volkswagen type engine, every single one. So grab them. They'll get you through that intimidation factor that you may have. And that is the only thing standing between you and putting an Aero-V together in uh, 10 or 12 hours at the most. Would you have to take the prop off to transfer it, transport the, uh, the airplane if you didn't use a trailer? Um, I don't believe so. Uh, you definitely want a prop cover because those little uh, stones and stuff that your tires kick up uh, wreak havoc on wooden propellers. Uh, by the way, we are testing some very cool new propellers, but right now those Sensenic uh, propellers that are coated with the composite coating uh, hold up very well, but if you're going to tow it, invest in a nice cover for your propeller. How are the Nicocell cylinders working out, and can you use unleaded premium in the Aero-V? Sure. Um, let's answer both of those questions. The Nicocell cylinder question, for those unfamiliar, uh, the Nicocell uh, barrels and pistons uh, would be, the, these would be the barrels. Uh, these are the standard uh, cast barrels uh, that have become kind of the standard for racing engines. And we've been using these uh, Nicosil cylinders we've been sourcing, uh, which are aluminum with that Nicosil coating. They've been phenomenal. Uh, they, they, they lighten the Aero-V by 10 pounds, which is great. So for heavier guys looking for more payload, there you go, buy Nicosil cylinders. Um, and uh, what was the other question, Charlie? The other part of the question? The Nicosil cylinders, I can't recall what the other part of that question was. Okay, sorry, I put you on the spot there. But anyway, the, that's that's the Euro V engine. I think the Nicosils are are great, great little. Uh, little so, oh, high high test unleaded gas. Uh, yes, yeah, there there are individuals who've been running auto fuel. We recommend you set it to seven to one compression ratio. How do you do that? You just put an extra shim right in right in this area between the barrel and the uh, and the crankcase. That would be right here and right here. Put an extra little shim in there, and you're able to uh, run it at seven to one compression and uh, use high test uh, unleaded auto fuel. Thing about the internet, Richard from Hong Kong would like to know if he should buy the Sonex kit before the One X is available, or should he wait? And will the One X be available in 2011 for sure? Well, first off, buying a Sonics kit is a great idea no matter when you do it. Um, there, you really can't go wrong with the Sonics kit. Come on, I had to answer the question like that, but. Uh, uh, you know, in my opinion, they're different airplanes. What's your mission would be my, my, my answer to the question. Um, what is your mission? If your mission is to have two people or two-person capability to go fly a little airplane, maybe you want to take your wife, your girlfriend, uh, buddies, significant other, whoever, for flights, then you should build a Sonex. If you don't care about that, if you uh, have a higher value, if you will, on, uh, on being affordable, on not having hangar rent, you know, your budget is a little tighter, maybe the One X will make sense. And I, and I know where the trick is there on, on when it's going to be available. I honestly cannot answer that question. I, I promise we're working as hard as we can. And obviously as a businessman and as somebody who wants a One X desperately himself, uh, I'm going to be focused entirely on getting this thing uh, built, flown, and tested and on the market as quickly as we, we safely can do it. What about the possibility of an inverted oil system for the Aero-V? 
Yes, uh, definite possibility. We, we really haven't done it uh, in any of our aircraft because we're sportsman class aerobatics, and I think a lot of guys lose that when they talk about aerobatics. Sportsman's class are almost entirely positive G aerobatic maneuvers. So that means you're, you're continuing the, the, the force of gravity, even in a loop or roll or whatever, is going to continue to be downward on the engine. So you're going to keep the oil where it needs to be. Uh, for those of you maniacs who want to go do unlimited aerobatics, uh, this isn't your airplane. Uh, the, you're you're going to do extended negative G maneuvers, and you're going to have to look for something else, like an extra 300, and I hope you have a lot of money. What is the gallons per hour on an Aero V? Yeah, very common question. Uh, gallons per hour is going to be right around four gallons per hour. That is our measured test. And actually, you can go to our website and you can see some actual burn figures uh, from our V engines. Um, uh, so yeah, about about that, about four gallons an hour. A takeoff config, you, know, you might see a little more than that. But uh, you know, the 16 gallons of gas that we have on the Sonics uh, gets you a true 450 to 500 mile range. That's pretty awesome. And uh, Ted Light would like to know if the AeroV has electronic ignition and is a dual battery setup required? Uh, dual battery setup, no. Uh, is it an electronic system? The answer is one of the two systems. And again, I'll invite you to, to come to our, one of our workshops or to one of our seminars during Air Ventures so you can hear all about the features of this beautiful engine. But the main ignition system is actually right there. It's a little magnetron ignition module from, uh, from a, an L-head twin uh, lawnmower engine. Uh, Self-energizing, meaning it's got a magnet and two coils. That magnet sweeps through on the flywheel, energizes the coil. The secondary ignition, however, is electronic, so it does need uh, battery power. But to answer your question directly, no dual battery setup required. The AeroV is awesome that way. Well, Jeremy, that about concludes the lightning round. There's still a lot of questions that are sitting here unanswered, but I realize that uh, many of us expected about an hour, and we've already gone over that, so I want to wrap it up. I want to thank you for giving the presentation. But the question is, if they have a follow-up question or if their question is answered tonight, where would you direct them? Yeah, um, send us an email anytime. Uh, we're very easy to reach at Sonics Aircraft. Uh, we have an awesome website that just has uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of pages on it, hundreds of pages of information. So go to our website, and if you still have questions, uh, come on in and join one of our um, one of our e-groups, one of our opt-in mailing lists, and, and you'll notice, those of you that are on the e-groups, you have noticed that I've been uh, quite active personally on the e-groups when they're required, and uh, I just circled as kind of a final slide here, our, our main uh, email, which is just sales at scienceaircraft.com, and, and Mark will get you an answer, and if he doesn't have the answer, uh, he'll find the person that does. Great, Jeremy. I really appreciate you coming over tonight. And uh, I just have one more question, and that is, are we going to be able to get your dad on here to do a webinar on the jet as soon as he got the thing flying? <laughs> I, I have learned a lot uh, in my very short career at Sonics. Just kidding, guys. I've, I've been with Sonics for 12 years and working with my father for, for 20 in earnest. Um, and I never, I never speak for him in that, but man, I'd love to have him, love to have him, and I know he'd do a tremendous job on this, and, and I know people are real excited about that jet, and it's, it's his uh, pride and joy right now. Great. Well, I appreciate you uh, doing this again, and uh, for those of you that want to uh, share this with anyone else, we will be posting it in about 24 hours at ea.org slash webinars, and uh, you can play it and replay it to your heart's desire, uh, to your heart's content. And uh, again, thanks everyone for coming out tonight and, and participating. Hey Charlie, just real quick, I just wanted to thank EAA for kind of leading this technology revolution and uh, Sonix is, is very proud uh, of the partnership we have with EAA and we're very proud of all the people of EAA that work so hard to bring this information to, to the members. Uh, we really appreciate it. I appreciate that, Jeremy, and with that, we will go ahead and sign off, and thanks for attending.